calcium potential travels down the axon toward the synaptic bulb and opens the calcium channels, which then allows calcium to flow into the cell. The calcium pushes the synaptic vesicles filled with acetylcholine down to the end of the cell to fuse with it. Acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft by exocytosis. Acetylcholine attaches to the acetylcholine receptors on the motor end plate of the myofiber. This opens the sodium-potassium channels, which allows sodium to rush into the cell, causing a depolarization. This sends an action potential along the sarcolemma. Acetylcholine esterase comes into the cell and breaks down acetylcholine and sends it back into the synaptic knob, causing the sodium potassium channels to close. The action potential continues to travel down the sarcolemma into the T-tubule, which then releases calcium from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium floods over the sarcomere of the myofibril. Here is a zoomed in display of some myofilaments. The calcium attaches to the troponin of the thin filament. This pulls the tropomyosin off of the active site of the actin. The energized myosin head binds to the active site of the actin. The myosin head moves to the low energy state, releasing the ADP from the myosin head. ATP comes from the mitochondria and binds to the myosin head which then releases it from the active site. ATP is converted to ADP, causing the myosin head to become energized again. Calcium then moves back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, where it is stored on the calcioquestrin, which allows tropomyosin to cover the active site on the actin. The muscle is now in a relaxed state.